S Cruise, how are you do's? We're gonna be discussing my arm. I've had surgery, I've had surgery on my arm, connecting my bicep to my forearm bone. Is it the radius? Is it the ulna? Have I got it completely wrong? It's connecting it to one of them bones. They, uh, I broke my, I ruptured my biceps tendon in a powerlifting competition in which I got gold even though I uh, kind of broke my body a little bit. And uh, yeah, then I went straight to hospital and about, I don't know, a few weeks later now, I'm actually, I have it repaired. I have the cast off. Um, it was in a cast for like a week. And yeah, it's good. I'm starting to get some mobility in it. Look at it. That's how much I can straighten my arm. So I'm going to work on straightening it. But we are going to be talking about what compounds I'm using in order to speed up the recovery of my little baby arm. So uh, basically the first thing I'm gonna be talking about, it's a peptide, it's injectable. No, it's not, that comes later. The first one I'm talking about is a peptide, but it is orally bioavailable. Uh, it is collagen, collagen protein peptides. Basically powdered collagen protein peptides, whatever. Um, in a tub, mix it in with a smoothie. Um, I'm blending a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, well, a few vegetables, a little bit of kale, a full bag of kale, in with a whole bunch of fruit. And I'm doing that very regularly, trying to get in my micronutrients, trying to create a low inflammatory kind of uh, body in which the healing process can like take place. And into these smoothies, I'm putting um, the collagen peptides, collagen protein. So basically, people have radio labeled the collagen and then they've looked at, I think it's on a C CT scan or uh, an emission, I don't know, one of them scans where they look at the, the radioactive stuff in you. Um, they saw that the, the collagen protein had traveled to the joints and was going into the joints. So you need collagen. Basically, you know, you need other types of, um, oh, my dog's rolling around making those noise and huffing. Oh. Um, you want basically leucine and these types of amino acids in abundance for building muscle, but they're not as great for building the connective tissue. So you need a different ratio of amino acids, which is found ready, readily in collagen, gelatin, these types of, uh, protein supplements. So I'm taking collagen. The next thing I'm taking is testosterone. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I've reduced the dose down from competitive levels down to like two, 300 milligrams per week, something like that. I'm injecting every day, so you can like vary it a little bit. I should be more consistent, but I know it's in the two to 300 milligrams per week range. And um, I'm actually finding the daily injections, I moved to every other day and my estrogen went right up. So doing the daily injections does really reduce the estrogenic burden. But um, yeah, testosterone, it's gonna help provide faster wound healing and just accelerated kind of muscle building. And I'm gonna be able to keep a lot of more of my strength and um, yeah, it's gonna speed things up. Now, as Greg Doucette can testify, there is some research that talks about <sighs> tendons and ligaments not repairing as well in um, when they're bathed in high testosterone. So, um, you know, my coach is saying maybe 400 milligrams, I think that's a bit excessive, um, but I think, you know, you wanna keep it just above normal, you know, maybe a couple times normal, maybe three times normal, um, but no more than that, you know, uh, just to aid the wound healing and keep a bit of anabolism. Like people that are really into steroids, they do like, you know, they just run like a full cycle without doing any exercise and they won't lose any muscle basically, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, okay. So that's the testosterone covers. The next thing we're going to talk about is growth hormone. So uh, this is a wonder compound. I've got the Pfizer genotropin in pens. It's it's amazing. Um, like I've managed to get a cheap supplier of it. 
So it's affordable for injuries and stuff like this. Basically, um, it is usually very expensive. I, from my doctor, uh, my steroid doctor, 400 pounds per pen. <sighs> crazy, get out of here, it's crazy. That's mad, that's how much it's worth in a sh shop in London, crazy. So um, <laughs> basically, um, the growth hormone, it helps everything grow. I, I can see that my skin is becoming thicker. It's getting, looking not as old um, because I'm doing six IU every other day and I'm having one day of just resting and then one day of growth hormone, keeping the sensitivity high. And uh, yeah, I'm finding that I can see visible effects on my skin already. And those effects are gonna be mirrored in the body and it's just enabling everything to kind of grow in a more youthful manner. I think it is actually aging, it shortens the telomeres, but um, you know, in the short term, on a surface level, it makes you look younger and makes your body act as it in a, in a more hormonal way like it would when you were younger. And when you're young, you've got loads of growth hormone. You've got to grow quite a lot. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm finding the growth hormone to be crazy. One thing that happened before is I stopped taking it. I was getting pulsating blood vessels all over my body, my neck, my head. It really hurt after I did some squats. And my um, my peripheral blood vessels in my left side of my head and my neck, the big ones, the arteries were pulsating. That's not good. It's a sign of like a stroke or a heart attack waiting to happen. Not good at all. Um, since I had a phone consultation with Leo Longevity, I've been taking all these antioxidant supplements, which should also help the healing. Um, these include uh, astragalus root, vitamin C, MSM, curcumin, NAC, um, what else have I been taking? I've been taking melatonin at night and that can alter the, in high doses, high doses of melatonin at night. Having a great night's sleep, no Valium, no uh, Benzos, it's great. And uh, I'm finding that one of these changes I've made, maybe it's taking Kratom. One of these changes I've made since that phone consultation is, or maybe all of them together, is meaning that my blood vessels aren't pulsating when I'm taking Viagra when I am taking growth hormone, which is amazing because these are both very, very good compounds with good um, outcomes to them. So uh, basically that's amazing. I, I feel like my heart isn't being worked like crazy. And one of the changes I've made, it's enabling me to take growth hormone now. So I'd be very curious to find out which change specifically it is, but it, that's amazing. Now, growth hormone is a peptide. I'm also taking other peptides, namely BPC-157 and TB-500. So BPC-157 is, it stands for Body Protective Compound 157. And it was found in the intestines. I mean, basically, the majority of the protein that people eat goes to replenishing their intestinal lining. The intestines are just turning over like, tissue non-stop. I don't know how much of your poo is actually intestinal lining that's shedded off, but I think it gets turned over like very, 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 very fast. So um, this BPC-157 was isolated from it. I think it helps with uh, blood vessel proliferation. It helps with um, reducing inflammation. It I've used it before. I didn't find a specific it, I, I felt like it could be effective on its own, but for me, it wasn't really very effective on its own. When I combined it with TB500, another um, uh, peptide, this one is actually banned by WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency or whatever. Um, and uh, it, I find it to be more effective than PPC157. And they are very effective when combined together. So um, yeah, the TB500, when I'm using it on a muscle that's damaged or a tendon that's inflamed, I found that it basically really sped up the healing process and just really, really sped it up. One thing that was crazy is when I combined the two, so I started using these compounds. These were the first compounds I ever injected before I went on to using testosterone. Now, when I was using them on my shoulder here, um, you could see tiny little bright red surface capillary blood vessels, but they were really near the surface and they were bright red. They weren't like the oxygenated blood. So this is uh, an indication that they do produce new blood vessels. Also, 
um, I was getting floaters in my eye, but these were black. Now, when I Googled this, it said that they are probably blood that's gone into the eye. So my, what I think happened, my hypothesis is that there have been new blood vessels forming on the lining on the inside of the eye. When I'm squatting really heavy, I'm like basically bursting them and pushing the blood out into my eye and it floats around, gets reabsorbed um, a few months later, no problem. So those are the two side effects I had. I had visible blood vessels, like r bright red ones coming up on my shoulder and blood in my eye when I took them uh, together for a period of time a while ago. And uh, I haven't had any effects like that so far. I've just started putting them into my elbow yesterday and these combined with the growth hormone are going to be extremely synergistic. I'm hoping for a very swift recovery. I'm so grateful that I'm able to take growth hormone right now um, and that my blood vessels aren't pulsating. I don't feel like I've got a heavy heartbeat. I feel healthy. I feel really good and I wouldn't take it otherwise. Uh, in fact, the last pen, I had to stop using it. I, I couldn't deal with the side effects. Your long-term health is always more important than your short-term health. So yeah, that's really cool. I'm amazingly grateful I can take the growth hormone. Um, it's good that I've got these other peptides on hand and combined with the uh, a low inflammation diet, the collagen, the testosterone, um, everything together hopefully will be a lovely synergistic environment to promote tendon growth. The tendon's gonna, it's been drilled, basically a hole's been drilled through my bone. I was awake for the start of the operation, it's crazy. A hole's been drilled through my bone and the, the tendon's been like, pulled into it, there's a button on the other side and it's been like pulled into it with these threads and then a, it's been screwed into and like wedged in there. Like there's been a big wide screw that's like pinched it between the screw and the edge of the hole in the bone and it's just kind of like sitting out the edge. So it's crazy. I need all of that to solidify and form um, basically the tendon, shoots out tendrils that go into the surrounding tissue. Everything just starts to uh basically well together scar tissue forms but this is a very delicate place for the next few months and then hopefully with all these compounds on board and sensible rehab i'm going to be smashing it hitting them prs again and uh killing it in the gym so i'm interested for all of y'all have you experienced uh tendon ruptures please let me know how you got on, what your rehab was, how far you felt like pushing it. Um, also, have you got experiences using uh, like any re regenerating, rehabilitating peptides? I'm um, really like interested to get your feedback on which ones worked for you, uh, the dosing protocols that you used and any stuff like that. So reach out people, catch you later, peace.